So I want to start by saying thank you, everyone, for coming. My name is Cody Armstrong, and also on the line is Ethan. Ethan's going to be available for any questions that you have as we're going through this. So feel free to type in any questions in the in the questions dialog if you go to Webinar Control Panel, and Ethan will do his best to answer any questions, and I'll also stop and make sure to address any questions as well. So the topic today is, of course, patterns in Onshape, and we're going to cover every type of pattern that I can think of. So sketch patterns, feature patterns, part patterns, face patterns, um, patterning parts at the assembly level with replicate, um, even some custom feature patterns that have been created by the Onshape community. So really wanted to show you just about any way that you can repeat geometry in Onshape. So that's the goal. Now I have a lot of examples for you. So we are going to jump through a lot of different documents. Um, so just bear with me. Um, now, in terms of the agenda, I first want to, of course, introduce you to the idea of a pattern. So if this is your first exposure to using patterns in a CAD tool, just briefly explain what a pattern is, at least in terms of what Onshape uses. Um, so, of course, simple introduction for patterns. I think many of those out there will understand already what I'm referring to when I say patterns. But then I want to get into sketch patterns, uh, linear patterns, circular pattern at the sketch level, go over how to create those patterns and just some neat uh, tips and tricks that you can do with it. So we're going to start with sketch patterns, then I'm going to get into part patterns, face patterns, feature patterns, um, patterning parts at the assembly level with replicate. So all kinds of ways that we can duplicate geometry outside of sketches. And throughout this whole thing, I'm going to do my best to give you any tips and tricks that I have as we're going through this, just things that can help you uh, create your patterns. So that's kind of a rough agenda. I do have a lot of examples for you, so I'm going to be doing a lot of jumping around between documents. Um, I probably won't use the whole hour, just depends on how many questions we get, um, but let's jump into things. Now, of course, the simple question, the first question the new, new user to CAD might ask is, what is a pattern? And the easiest way to explain a pattern is just simply repeating geometry, repeating sketch geometry, faces, features, parts, you know, whatever the scenario may be. You can pattern all these things with Onshape. I'm going to go through an example of each one of them. But a simple way of explaining a pattern is just repeating geometry, you know, based on maybe it's a linear distance between pattern instances, a circular distance, or even some custom options as well. But again, simple explanation, we're repeating the geometry. Uh, so you use this where you have repetitive shapes. If you have a repetitive feature, you know, I find myself adding this circular boss in all these corners, or if I find myself adding a circular boss evenly spaced at a certain distance. Those are all examples of repetitive shapes that you can simplify um, with a pattern. And so for those users out there, just a simple explanation of what a pattern is. Now, what are some things that we can do inside of Onshape? And the big things I want to point out is just about anything can be patterned. So when we talk about sketches, we have a mirror command, linear and circular patterns for sketch entities. And we also have a mirror, linear, and circular feature pattern. Um, so feature patterns as well. Now I added transform to that list, and I think there's unique capability in transform that you may not get in a typical pattern. I'll show you an example of that in just a bit. But transform allows you to copy the part and create more instances. Now, in this case, um, I also want to discuss assemblies and, and how we pattern you know, parts at the assembly level and, and uh, as we're assembling our you know, various designs. The last thing I want to get into are some custom feature script driven patterns that have been created since feature script was launched. And, and they really kind of give you those odd scenarios where you might not have a perfectly linear pattern or a perfectly circular pattern, but it is a pattern. You are repeating geometry. There's lots of examples I can give you, but curve patterns, you know, curving uh, parts along geometry, fill patterns, for example, um, filling a face, for example, with a certain uh, geometric shape, and then point patterns, the ability to pattern parts at sketch points. So lots of custom patterns. I have a few examples of these to go through as well. So these are just kind of the, the list of patterns that I was hoping to cover in this uh, webinar. Let's jump right into it. Now, as I mentioned before, I wanted to start with sketch patterns, and in particular, sketch mirror, linear sketch pattern, and circular sketch pattern. And we're going to start with a simple example of a sketch mirror. So if I edit this sketch, here I've just sketched a few simple lines with a construction line in the center. And what I'd like to do is take all of these lines and mirror them to the other side of this construction line. Very simple to do. In the sketch toolbar, you have the mirror command. Click mirror, first select the mirror line, the line that you want to mirror about, then select entities that, that you want to mirror. 
In this case, I'll select all of my lines. Now a tip, if you have a lot of geometry you want to mirror, you can window select. There's a lot of you know, selection techniques that don't make you require, you know, or don't require you to left click individual entities. Um, so you could window select a whole series of them, for, for instance. But the process is the same. Select the construction line, then select the entities that you want to mirror. Okay, so that's a simple mirror. Now, you may ask, what's the difference between a mirror and just drawing these extra lines in? And the benefit to a mirror is that you get the symmetry. In fact, if you look closely, you'll see that there's a symmetric relation created when I do a mirror. Right, so you'll see symmetric relation associated with all these pieces of geometry. And that's so if I grab and drag and I change the size of this, it, it, it remains centered about that construction line. Okay. So that's one of the first patterns, I'd say, is patterning or mirroring sketch geometry. And a big benefit there is you get that symmetry about the construction line. Okay. The other thing I want to point out is notice you'll see that in this case, you know, I can go in and delete individual constraints if I choose to. So if I don't want, you know, one piece of it uh, mirrored or if I find myself, you know, um, dealing with you know, over definition, for example, I can delete the symmetric constraint. It really is just adding a series of constraints and lines. So that's a simple example of the mirror command. Again, the key with the sketch mirror is you first select the line you want to mirror about, then any geometry that you want to mirror. Okay. And I could easily take the shape and do a simple revolve and create my round part. Okay. So a simple sketch mirror. Now we want to get into some of the little bit more elaborate patterns, in particular linear and circular sketch patterns. And so one of the first examples I have is a linear sketch pattern. I think it's a simple one and I just want to take this circle. Here I have a simple circle on this bracket and I want to pattern this circle along the edge. And I want to create another instance, another set, another row, so to speak, of, of holes above it. And in this case, you can do both with a single linear pattern. So the first step, of course, you have linear pattern in the toolbar. So you select linear pattern. Then you select the geometry you want to pattern. In my case, left click the circle. Immediately, it defaults to a pattern in a certain direction. Right, so you'll see I'm going in this direction. I have three instances, and you know I can specify all of that. If I left click the the arrow, excuse me, it flips the direction of the pattern, and I can also drag the arrow to dynamically resize the distance between pattern instances. Okay. Um, another tip that I have is you can add multiple rows, so to speak, to your pattern. So I can go multiple directions by just left clicking and dragging the second arrow. Right? So here I've got the second arrow, I can move it up, and now I've got two rows, you know, two directions that I'm patterning. Now, it's not just the arrows that you can manipulate, you can resize this, you can resize the distance between them, but you can also grab the handles at the bottoms and drag them. You do not have to have perfect, perfectly perpendicular um, geometry. I can grab this and drag it over. I can grab this and drag it down. You can do all kinds of neat things um, with this. So I do want to point that out. You can grab these handles and manipulate them afterwards. Okay. Now, inevitably, of course, you'll want to create your pattern. And the few things that I want to point out here is we have instance counts, right? So I have three of these instances now, but if I double click the number, I can type in five. Now I have five instances. Right? So you can change the instance count, so you can of course change the distance between instances. Right? So I can say 2.5. The important step, and one that's very easy to miss in both linear sketch pattern and circular sketch pattern, is that you must left click in empty space to accept it. And that's a very important step that I want to point out here. You know, Once I'm satisfied with the look of this, I left click in the graphics to actually accept the pattern. Okay. Now, the, the key thing that I want to point out is once you've accepted it, it's not fixed, it's not written in stone, so to speak. You can go in and then constrain it and even move it. Right? So I can move the pattern around. I can select this and make it horizontal to start to constrain it. I can set an angle between these two construction lines, let's say 25, 
And so you can go in and define it as if it were a sketch. Um, the key thing, again, is it's really con creating these pattern relations that allow it to update. Now, another thing I want to point out is you can delete any instance, and it doesn't impact the overall pattern. So you can choose any one of these instances and just delete it from the graphics, and it doesn't have an impact on the overall pattern. Um, also, you don't have to drive it with fixed de distances between them. So for instance, let's say I don't, I don't care as much about the distance between the holes. What I want is five evenly spaced holes from this point to the edge of the part, or maybe an inch away from the edge of the part. So what I can do is I can delete this dimension that drives the distance between those pattern instances. And rather than do that, I can add a dimension from this edge. And so now the driving dimension for this pattern isn't the distance between each. It's the distance from the edge. And this allows me to much more accurately reflect my design intent. I don't have to update you know, manually the linear pattern instance count if I decide to make this part longer or shorter. There will always be five holes you know, in that direction from this point to the edge of the part. And so uh, it allows me to build a little bit more design intent. The big thing I want to point out is once you've accepted your initial linear pattern, you can continue to manipulate and define your geometry the way you want to. You can delete the dimensions, you can add new dimensions, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with these uh, sketch pattern instances. So I do want to point that out again, um, you know, as you're initially placing it, it's very similar to mirror. Select the command, select the geometry on a pattern. Then grab your arrows and manipulate to a rough position, then enter your values. Number of instances, spacing between each. Um, the important step with both this and circular, and I mentioned it before, is make sure to left click in the graphics to accept the command. That will actually accept the, the pattern itself. Uh, if you don't, if you use escape, for instance, you'll find yourself constantly not, you know, the, the escaping out of the command rather than accepting it. So make sure to left click in the graphics. So that is the linear sketch pattern and a few tips that I have for linear sketch patterns. I think it is pretty flexible in allowing you to design the way uh, that you want. The next example I have is a circular sketch pattern. And this one's again pretty straightforward. Let's say for instance, I wanted to sketch a simple bolt circle in this uh, part, for instance. And you know, I select a circle, and we'll create a vertical off of this, let's say, 0.25 and distance from the center of one. All right. Now let's say that I want to take this circle and circular pattern it around this round part. All right. So I want four of these circles at 90 degree increments around the part. So this is an example where I might use a circular pattern. You'll find the circular pattern in the command. I select circular pattern from the toolbar. I select the geometry I want to pattern. As soon as you do that, you immediately get the circular pattern. You get a preview of it. There are some key things to point out. First and, and probably most obvious is the instance count. Right? I want four instances, as I mentioned before. So that's an obvious one, instance count. By default, it will assume that you want four evenly spaced holes over 360 degrees, or whatever the, the number is, over 360, so a full um, rotation. Now, you don't have to do that. So let's say, for instance, I wanted four evenly spaced holes across a 180 degree arc. I can left click and drag this arrow and dynamically resize the amount of rotation in my circular pattern. Okay. I can even double click the number, enter it, and now I have four evenly spaced holes over a 180 degree span as opposed to full 360. So you can change the degrees for the total pattern. You can of course just grab this and drag it back up and that will give you a full pattern. The other thing I want to point out, and it's also very easy to miss, is by default a circular pattern will attach to the origin. But in my case, you can see it's, it's my part is perfectly centered over the origin. That happens to work. But yours may not be. And in that case, you'll need to drag the origin of the pattern around. So an important step, and I think this one's easy to miss, is you can grab and manipulate the center point 
of your circular pattern, place it anywhere you want, and then also define the distance based on that. Right, So it will automatically define the distance from your pattern instance to your center point, and that gives you the diameter for your circular pattern. But an important tip, make sure to attach that point to something that you want in your model and give it the correct intent. Again, same tip as before. Once you're done, make sure to left-click in the graphics to accept the pattern, uh, an important step as you finish things up there. Okay, some questions. From top and bottom, does Onshape convert them to a single entity or does it maintain as two entities? In this case, it maintains as two entities. Um, will that constraint always apply to the last hole if the design is parametric? Will it apply to that instance? It will apply if, for instance, um, this dimension that I added for this diameter of the hole. If I change this, it updates all instances of the pattern. So those values are linked. Um, it's the same thing as the last example with the linear sketch pattern. If you change the original, um, what's referred to often as the seed instance, all of the pattern instances automatically update. Okay. So that is a simple circular sketch pattern. Um, again, not don't want to go into too great a detail. Very simple example, I know, but um, just want to point that out. Again, key things with the circular sketch pattern. You can grab that arrow and drag it if you don't want a full 360 degree pattern. And you also want to make sure to grab the center point and manipulate it and attach it to the geometry that you want to to correctly define your pattern. So that's a circular sketch pattern. Um, so that is the, the pattern commands, at least at the sketch geometry level that we're going to discuss here today. Now, I want to get into some of the feature patterns that we have. Okay, so some questions that come up. Real quickly, can a circular pattern be an object in a rectangular pattern or vice versa? Can a circular pattern be an object in a rectangular pattern or vice versa? Yes, you can select, I'm going to show you an example of this in just a bit, you can pattern patterns if that's the question. You can pattern the entities that were created with a pattern. Um, forgive me if that's not what your question is. Can you do that with a cluster of holes? Um, yes. We have a we actually have a command to automate the cluster of holes as well. I'm going to show you an example of it. it's called a fill pattern. Um, question, my question related to the last hole you dimensioned from the end. The last hole I dimensioned from the end is driving the all instances, not just the single instance. So uh, if I change that dimension on the end or the whole pattern distance from the end, they would all update. Okay, so those are our sketch patterns. Um, what, if, what do you do if you're trying to sketch a pattern onto the surface of a circle, uh, the outside of the circle, the round, the face that is? It's not a planar surface. In other words, you would want to do something like um, you could project the entities onto it. You could split the face using the split command, and that would give you the curvature uh, around the arc. So there's a few things that you could do from there. Can you pattern from an inputted formula? You can pattern with variables. But the variables themselves, um, you would need to set up with that formula. To be honest, I haven't tried that for certain. Build a variable with a formula and then use that as a pattern. Um, I do know that you can use the variables as, as you know driving dimensions for the for the pattern. So it'd be something I'd have to try myself. I do have some unique things we can do with variables and formulas. I'm going to show you in just a moment. Okay, so moving on, the feature level patterns are, of course, a bit different. So rather than patterning sketch geometry, 2D geometry on a sketch plane, we're patterning 3D features, right? We're creating real features, parts, faces, um, or, or the whole feature, right? Or many features. So we're taking what is 3D model geometry and, and patterning it. In this case, the first example I want to give you is a simple mirror command. Um, so one of the first things, really easy, you select the mirror command from the toolbar. You have a few options that I want to point out, and this is consistent with mirror, linear pattern, circular pattern. You have part mirror, feature mirror, or face mirror. So in a case of a part mirror, it would literally mirror the parts. In the case of a feature, you would get a feature level mirror. So it depends on what you're trying to do. I'm going to show you an example first of a simple part mirror. 
and we'll say I want to mirror these pins to create the hole. Okay. I select my mirror plane, which is mid plane, and it mirrors those to the other side. Okay. Now, one thing I want to point out is notice that it's mirroring it, but it's creating separate parts for each one of those pins. So you can mirror whole parts and get whole separate parts in your part studio. You know, a question that we often get asked is, can I create like a left right hand version? You can absolutely do that with the mirror command and it will by default in the part mirror create new parts. But what you can also do is choose add and say instead of creating whole separate parts, I want you to merge these mirrored bodies with these four parts. And what that will do is now instead of creating separate parts, it mirrors the whole thing. Right? So it mirrors that part over and merges the two together automatically. Okay? So just a tip in the mirror command, you can mirror parts and you can also merge the mirrored parts with the add or even remove one from the other with remove. So all kinds of options in the mirror when you're mirroring something like parts. Another example I like to give if we jump back real quickly to the first tab here. This is a, you know, clamped um, vise. And as I twist this down, of course, it will thread in right, and out. What I would expect is these two parts to be mirrored instances of each other. And that's another example where I can take these two parts and mirror them. Right? So we'll select mirror, another part mirror. I do want new parts. We'll select the two arms choose the mirror plane, and it mirrors those two parts to the other side. Okay. So both of these are part mirrors, very simple examples of them, um, but they allow you to create really powerful shapes very quickly. Right? I can mirror the entire part, I can merge it with the original or create a new part in that part studio. It's entirely up to you. So that's a simple example of the mirror feature question how do you create a pattern so that one hole determined clocking can you dimension a single holes offset within the pattern absolutely you could dimension that one hole with the angle offset and then pattern that one hole so that's that's probably the way i would do it uh, explain the add option the add option allows you to merge the mirrored bodies that you're creating with bodies that you specify and so in this case it's actually combining the mirrored body that's getting created with the original body that I used to mirror and creating one part out of it. If I had chosen new, this is now a separate part from the original that I clicked on. All right, so add allows me to merge my mirrored parts with the originals, create one. Uh, question, is there an option for a surface fill option like selecting a feature and then a surface and having on shape fill said surface with said feature with certain control, feature to feature distance, density, etc.? Yes, I do have an example of that. That's actually a custom feature that was written by um, one of the on shape community members and will allow you to do what's often referred to as a fill pattern. Um, and remove will do a literally a cut. A lot of people re refer to a remove as a cut. Can you pattern a spiral using an advanced formula? Yes, you can. A spiral pattern is easy to do with feature script, by the way. Okay. There, there, I believe there's a feature script sample. You would have to write one from scratch. There isn't a spiral pattern as of today, um, but that's absolutely something you can write with feature script. Okay, so this is the simple mirror feature. You can mirror parts, features, or of course, faces. Um, let's jump into the next example I have, and that is the linear pattern. And the linear feature pattern is, is very uh, capable. The reason I bring this up is, you know, there are many situations in a, in a lot of traditional CAD applications where a pattern may fail because geometry around that pattern changes. Um, the neat thing I like to point out about our feature patterns is that they're, mat they're patterning not just uh, the geometry, but the actual feature. So if the feature has certain end conditions, if the feature has certain things associated with it, you also get a pattern of those things. So let me show you a simple example of this. Um, we have the linear pattern command in the toolbar, select linear pattern. 
Then select the entities you want to pattern. Now, in my case, I don't want to pattern a part. I want to pattern a series of features. So I select Feature Pattern. Then I select the features that I want to pattern. Once I have the features I want to pattern defined, then specify a direction. Now you can do this with a face or with an edge. I find an edge the most intuitive. I want to pattern parallel to this edge. So I left click and it creates a simple linear pattern. Okay. And it's patterning just the extrude and the fillet associated with that extrude. The reason I think this is neat is notice what happens when I change this instance count to three. Notice the in condition is maintained, the fillet is maintained, even though the geometry is wildly different than the originals. Because I'm patterning the entire feature, you get a very intuitive pattern. It allows me to keep adding instances and not worry about the in conditions associated with it or so on. Right. And so I can keep going. Let's say that I want you know, 10 pattern instances. And there's all 10 instance patterns or patterns of that feature. All right, in this case, extrude to and fill it to. Now, it's not just um, extrudes, revolve sweeps, those kinds of things that can be patterned. You can also pattern variables. And so I mentioned before, here's a variable, right? Offset equals four. And now you can see I'm subtracting four from each pattern instance, right? So I can pattern things like variables and create very neat patterns um, very easily. Okay. Now the question has come up and it's a good question. Can you skip instances? The answer is no, not today. Um, we definitely recognize the need for that. There's other tools you could use as a, as a workaround and I'll, and I'll show you one in particular, but no, no option to skip instances as of today. All right. So very easy to do. Again, feature pattern. I'm, fe I'm patterning not just the extrude and the fillet that make up that round boss, but also the variable. And that patterning of the variable allows me to get that offset effect between each. Again, also notice that the pattern instances are automatically adjusting to any changes in geometry. So the fillets maintain, the in condition for up to next, the draft, all that stuff continues and behaves the way I like, you know, might like I might expect. Okay. So that is a feature pattern, and that is the linear pattern example. Very simple one. The next one I have is a circular pattern pattern. Okay. Uh, question, what was the sketching plane and depth settings for the protrusion that was pattern? Um, let me gump, jump back here. If I edit the sketch, it's a simple circle. And if I edit the extrude, you'll see it's up to next with draft uh, specify. So the up to next, again, because we're patterning the feature, was recognized as, oh, that the in condition has changed, the depth of the feature has changed, so you can move it. Okay. Um, suggestion, can you somehow disassociate a pattern item after the fact and then edit its parameters? That's definitely something we're looking into. I think more flexibility in patterns I in general, whether it's instance counts or whatever, um, is, is something that we're looking into. Okay, so that is a simple linear pattern. Uh, let's jump into a circular. Real quickly, question. Was the variable offset tied to the height? In this case, it's just a variable referred to as offset. Okay, offset equals four. All right, so let's move on now. I'd like to do a simple circular pattern of this cut with a fillet. And the scenario may be, you know, I want to have four instance of the instances of these rotated around in four individual pieces. Um, in that case, I'd use a circular pattern. Okay. Choose the feature pattern option. I want to pattern the feature, in this case, not the part. And then choose the features I want to pattern, in this case, extrude two and fillet one. Now, the only real difference here between this and potentially a linear pattern is that instead of selecting an edge to define a linear direction, you, ref you define a, an axis to pattern around. And you can do this a few different ways, but the easiest and probably the most common is to select a circular edge or a circular face. 
Uh, that will automatically grab the center or the axis in that part and then create that as the rotation axis for the pattern. So an important tip, I normally I think most users use a round face or a round edge to define their axis. Okay. Now, some options that I want to point out. First and probably most common is equal spacing. So you can have equal spacing between instances. And in this case, let's say I want four instances equally spaced over 360 degrees. I enter 360, instance count four, and there's my four instances of this feature pattern. Okay. So very simple, equal spacing allows you to equally space uh, depending on the angle value. It just takes, in this case, 360 divided by four, and that's the spacing between each instance of your pattern. Okay. So very simple, again, the key thing with a circular pattern is having that round edge or round face as a reference. Um, there are other things you can use as a reference, like a, a line, for example, but um, most commonly, if you already have a radius face or edge, um, you can use that as well. Yeah. All right, so you can take this one step further. So real quickly, I'll let these two circular patterns rebuild. And the question came up earlier, can you pattern a pattern, for example? Uh, and the answer is yes, you can pattern another pattern. Um, and you can create relatively complex shapes out of those types of things. And so the example I like to give if I go into this circular pattern is here I'm patterning two variables, a sketch into the extrude, the fillet, and a circular pattern. And that allows me to create this pattern instance where the slot varies, the number of instances in a 90 degree increment varies, and I create this kind of um, cascading pattern that, that grows with the diameter that I'm choosing. Uh, so definitely a lot of capabilities in the pow uh, patterns when you combine them with things like uh, variables. Now, an another thing I want to point out, and this is for those that um, you know are curious, there's a document uh, in the public documents, if you do a search, um, Neil Cook posted it. It's called Pretty Patterns. If you do just do a search for pretty patterns, you'll find a lot of these examples I'm showing you, especially the linear patterns with the variables and all kinds of very cool stuff. This is another example that he created. This is a hairbrush um, generated using a lot of linear patterned bristles, right? Um, sine wave patterns, alternating patterns, all in this public document called Pretty Patterns. Definitely one to check out if you're trying to get into patterns and all the things that you can do with them. So those are linear and circular patterns. And of course, the main difference there is you pattern along an edge or around an axis. Um, questions. Can you have those pegs follow a curved pattern in height? We do have a curved pattern. Um, and so I, I suspect that might be the command I, I might go for. Um, it really just depends on the scenario and the geometry associated with it. You know, if my up to next condition goes up to a curved surface, then I can accomplish that. Um, so there might be a few ways, in other words. Um, would you get an error with an input of five instances given those slot dimensions? I believe so, yes. I would need to try it for sure, but I believe so. Um, this method to create patterns of turbine blades. We don't have a specific example um, of generating turbine blades, um, but you can absolutely do a circular pattern to generate, yeah, generate one blade, so to speak, and then do a circular pattern of that blade. Um, can you share that document? As I mentioned before, these examples that I've been showing you are publicly available in a document called Pretty Patterns. So if you just do a search in your document list for Pretty Patterns, you'll find many of these examples that I'm showing you, the linear, the circular pattern, the hairbrush, and so on. Okay, so I've mentioned linear patterns, circular patterns, mirrors, but what about transform? And transform is not often associated with a pattern, but it does have the ability to copy a part, and that's the reason I like to bring it up. There are certain situations where a transform copy gives me a little bit more design intent, a little bit more flexibility than something like a linear pattern may. Um, and the example I like to give is a something like a simple U-bolt, where here I have the thread shape, defined for my U-bolt, and I want to pattern it to the other side. And of course, you can do a linear pattern. I could pattern, you know, maybe around the right plane with one and a half inches, right? Maybe two. 
There we go. So now I have a simple linear pattern of this part, and I can go in and do a Boolean and subtract the threads from the U-bolt and create my finished U-bolt. And that's the way many users will do it. What I'd like to show you is an alternative not using a linear pattern, but using a transform. And let me explain why. If I use a linear pattern like I did here, it's not very, um, it doesn't reflect my design intent well. And what I mean by that is it's a dumb number, so to speak. If my design changes, for instance, if I change this to 1.5, then the linear pattern is very, very different, obviously. Right? The linear pattern was a dumb number of two inches. I wanted two inches between them. So it doesn't update well. And so the answer to this is instead of using something like a linear pattern, you can use something like a transform. Transform has the option to copy the part. So I can say I want to transform this part. I want to translate by line. And you have a lot of options for transform, by the way. I'm not going to go into all of them. But I can say, okay, this line drives my transform, and I want copy part. And that will give me both my original thread and the new bodied thread on the opposite side. But more importantly, when I make a change, let's say I go back to two inches, because the line drives the transform, it will update. So rather than having a static linear pattern driven by a distance, the transform allows me to copy a part but drive it with maybe sketch geometry uh, or make connectors or all kinds of things. And it gives you kind of that layer of design intent that you wouldn't normally get with a simple linear pattern between them. Now, of course, we could discuss techniques and linear patterns and things that you can do and, and so on. And, and I don't want to get into too great a detail on that. But my, I just want to point this up as it is an option for creating copies of parts. You can use something like a transform. And of course, the main goal with this is to do a Boolean, subtract, and subtract the two tools from my target and create my uh, threaded U-bolt. Uh, question. But you may also use variable for design size in both, in pattern and pattern, why not? You, yes, you're right. And that's another example of something else you could do. But we could discuss you know, including variables in patterns and getting the correct design intent. We can include deleting the instance dimension and driving it by another dimension altogether that is tied to the geometry. So there are certainly ways to do a linear pattern and correctly reflect your intent. I don't want to mislead you. I just want to point out that transform is also an option, especially if you already have existing geometry you can easily reference. Um, could you also use a variable to drive both width and linear pattern? Now, when I assume you say width, you mean width between instances, and the answer is yes. You could drive the instance count and the width with variables. Can you use patterns to create points in a 3D grid? Well, you could use patterns to point, you know, to pattern points on a 2D sketch plane and combine that to create a 3D grid. But, but no, there's, remember, anything we're doing here is, in this case in, in points is a sketch, you know, is a, is a 2D sketch. Could you better explain what Boolean does? A Boolean is an operation that subtracts, adds, or joins two bodies. Um, I shouldn't say subtract, add, and join. Union, subtract, and intersect. So if I wanted to join two parts together, that would be a union Boolean. If I wanted to subtract one part from another, that would be union, subtract. If I wanted only what's shared between two bodies, that's what's referred to as intersect. Question, is there a way to use patterns to offset a face? You could absolutely use patterns to create multiple faces. Um, you wouldn't use patterns to move a face. Uh, I would use something like a, a transform for that. Um, forgive me if I'm misunderstanding, but you would use patterns to create many, many faces or duplicate a face but you wouldn't use it just to move or offset a face, maybe to make a face bigger. You wouldn't use a pattern to accomplish that. I would use something like move face or a transform. The Boolean intersect will only give you what the two parts share in common. 
Um, so I don't know that I have a great example of this at the moment. So forgive me. Um, so here I have, you know, two threads. Um, yeah, that's, this is a bad example of it. But again, the key thing with a Boolean is I have, let's say that I have two parts and I'd want to do a Boolean intersect. The only thing that you'll be left with is where the two parts overlapped, where they were intersecting. Um, so two intersecting bodies, you'll only be left with what was intersecting between them. That's an intersect. Remove will remove one from the other, and union joins them together. Okay. All right, so moving on, that is an example of the transform command. It's just another option when we talk about patterning parts and creating multiple uh, multiple parts in your part studio. Now, what about at the assembly level? And this is a frequently asked question. You know, what if I want to do a linear pattern of parts at the assembly level? Or what if I wanted to have many, many parts patterned at the assembly level? And we actually have a very powerful command called replicate that I'd like to show you. And it, and it allows you to take something simple, let's say this clamp that I have, and pattern a whole series of in, you know other instances of that part or assembly. Um, based on surrounding faces. And so if you think of assembly modeling, oftentimes what I'd like is I want a pattern of this clamp at every one of these holes. It's not perfectly circular. It's not perfectly linear. I really just want these three parts at every hole in the assembly. And that's a perfect example where replicate is useful. I can select replicate. I select the instances that I want to pattern. In this case, these three parts. Then I select a face to match the edges on. And the key thing there is this, these parts are mated to another part. And what it will look for is edges on a face that match that selection. So if I left click the top face here, it goes through and it finds the same edge on all these instances and patterns the parts to them, right? So it's matching edges on a face. And it allows me to say, okay, pattern the parts wherever you find this common shape, you know, circle, whatever it may be, and whatever the original seed instance is mated to, it will pattern those across a face. Now, you don't have to pattern all of them. You can say match individual edges and say, okay, I want to pattern just here, for example, and I pattern just that one inst instance based on my selection. So you do have some, you know, uh, ability to control how many you can pattern them individually. Um, but the neat thing is the, the match edge on face allows you to just click a face and it automatically patterns anywhere, you know, where it happens to find that matching geometry. So replicate, I think, has the ability to replace a lot of um, linear patterns and circular patterns when really all you want is to line up with holes or line up with other geometry that exists. Okay. All right, so that is the replicate command. Um, questions that have come up. Can you use all these on imported files? Yes, absolutely. There's no limitations to patterns with regards to imported models. Uh, how do you control orientation of the patterns? In this example, you don't. It, it orients them in the same way that they were originally oriented, uh, the way that they were mated together in the subassembly. So I do want to point out I will need to then go in and rotate these around. Okay, rotate that around so it's facing the right way. All it's doing is it's taking the, the original orientation of the model and patterning that. Um, so I would have to go in and move these around individually. Um, but again, it just saves me the time of having to insert them one at a time. Does this create mates for the patterned parts? And the answer is absolutely. If you go in, you'll see, forgive me, I'm zooming in and out here. I have fastened mates, cylindrical mates to identify each of the parts. So it not just duplicates the parts, but it also duplicates the mates associated with those parts. So you don't have to go in and mate them individually. Now, the only reason that I have you know, to move this manually is because in the subassembly, this is free to move as well. It's free to move up and down and spin. Uh, can you rotate them all so they are pointing in a similar direction? Um, you can grab. I can left-click as many as I want and rotate them. Yes. 
Can you pat break the pattern and keep parts as independent? It's important to point out there's not a pattern feature here. It's patterning the parts and the mates, but they are their own parts within the assembly. I can you know delete them. I can delete the mates associated with them and move them around if I wanted to. Um, so all kinds of stuff that you can do, but there is no feature in the feature list that controls this. You have just a pattern of parts and mates associated with it, which makes it easy to delete a mate or to, you know, to um, delete a part and not have it affect the entire thing. Uh, say along radials. I, again, you know, you would, what most users would do, an example like I would have here is here I've created maybe a linear pattern for all the holes in the base plate. And I'm using the holes in the base plate to drive the part locations. Uh, it's not a radial pattern or a circular pattern. It's based on the holes and the matching edges in the face. And so really, you know, wherever those holes were driven, that's what's driving this, this part pattern. Um, after creating this pattern, if I add another hole in the base plate, will a new component be added? The answer is no. It's not a feature, and the feature list will not behave in that way. You could, of course, add a new replicate and, and select the edge or reselect the face. Um, but it's a good thing to point out. It will not dynamically update as you, as you add more holes. Uh, as the file size gets larger with so many mates being created, is the performance degraded? You could certainly say that there is a performance impact by adding a lot of mates. Um, you know, there's techniques to get away with that. I can I can pattern a subassembly, for example, and have that all within it. But I will say that in general, you know, we're fairly good about performance and the ability to scale and to match the complexity of your assembly. All right, so moving on, I have just a few minutes left, and I do want to mention some of the custom patterns that are out there. So everything I've shown you up to this point uh, is in standard Onshape. Everyone has access to everything I've shown you up to this point. What I'd like to show you are some custom features that you can add to your toolbar and create really you know, pretty neat patterns. So I'm going to show you a few examples of these. Now, the first that I have is a curve pattern. And it's a frequently asked question, can I pattern parts along a curve, for example? Now, this is a custom feature that you can add to your toolbar. It's not included. Um, it's not in standard on shape, so to speak, but you can add it. Now, the question then comes up, how do I add these features? The next three features that I'm going to show you can all be added to your toolbar in the same way. You'll see a custom features icon, add custom features in the far right. If you left click that, and then you select Feature Script Samples. There's a list of Feature Script samples that are available to you. And many of these, like the fill pattern that I'm going to show you, the point pattern, um, all of these are here. And so you can add the curve pattern, for example, right here, as an icon in your toolbar. Right? So I can select Curve Pattern, select the actual command, and now you'll see a CP button has been added to my toolbar. So these next three examples, although they're not in the standard toolbar, can easily be added to them. Now, so curve patterns are pretty straightforward. You select curve pattern. You have the same options as a linear or circular pattern. You have part, feature, and face. I can select feature, define the features that I want to pattern. So in this case, the mid-plane, all the attachment holes, Boolean operations, and the loft called connecting bar. And then I just define the edges that I want to pattern. Now, in my case, I actually have a sketch just for this purpose. It's called Path Sketch. And all I'm doing is I'm selecting geometry from that sketch. It's then taking the features that I've selected and patterning them along that curve. Okay. Now, this command is definitely very robust. It's one of the, the commands with the most options in terms of custom features. You can do all kinds of cool things. So I can say... Uh, I want to define my pattern count of, let's say, 20. I want 20 pattern instances between the start and end of the curve. Right? And it will go through and recalculate and give me 20 of those features. Or I can say, instead of a pattern count, defined by a fixed distance. I want a fixed distance of, let's say, 10 inches between each pattern instance. Right. So you really do have a lot of control over this command. Definitely something that I would check out um, if you're trying to pattern along a curve of any sort. You, know, you can create 
some pretty complex power uh, patterns very quickly. All right, so there's 10 inches apart, let's say five inches apart, um, and you can see I can play with the values and it will update accordingly. Okay. So that is the curve pattern. Um, definitely one of the more powerful custom features. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. Um, there's all kinds of cool examples I could give you with this. Here's a spiral staircase generated using a curve pattern. Right, so there's the curve pattern to generate a spiral staircase. All kinds of examples of curve patterns that I could give you. So that's the first one. That is curve pattern. The next one in the list is the fill pattern. And this is a frequently asked question. Is there a way to take a face, for example, and just fill an entire face with instances of that hole or slot or whatever it may be? And this is a great example where you can do that. This is what's referred to as the fill pattern. Uh, and it's fairly straightforward. You select fill pattern. You select your face that you want to pattern. Then you select a target face. Then specify a direction. I'll select an edge. What it will do is it will pattern that face as many times as it can inside of the target face that you've selected. And it allows you to control two things. The distance between pattern instances and the distance away from edges. So I can say, okay, I want 15 millimeters between each pattern instance. And you'll see the pattern gets denser as I do this. And I also want 10 millimeters at least of offset away from all edges. And you'll notice many of the holes lose their pattern instances because they were closer than 10 millimeters uh, to that edge. Okay? So fill pattern allows you to select a face. It will pattern as much as it can into the edges of the face and you can specify distance between instances and distance from edges or border. Okay. So that's it, that's the fill pattern, very simple and easy to use. You select your face, your target face, and you know a direction, and it will pattern as many as it can within that. Question that's come up, um, will this work with features or bodies? And the answer is today, no. But I do wanna point out, this is open source. So you can take this feature and build your own version of it. Um, you can take the source code for this. This is a feature script feature, by the way, and so was the last one that I showed you. And that means you can look at the source code and build your own version. Now, you know, I, I, I would expect that at some point, you know, I'm sure they're going to add capabilities to these. So all of these examples will evolve, much like on-chip features evolve. But as of today, um, no, it's just, just face patterns. All right. Is there a way to control the type of pattern fill? No, right now it's a linear um, a pattern instance between whatever face or entities that you select. Okay. Uh, can you do the same pattern with a dimpled appearance? Holes are not through the plate, but more like a golf ball surface. You can pattern any face with that command. Um, so it's just a matter of selecting the dimpled face instead of the, the through hole. Um, but you, it's a face pattern, essentially. It will pattern any face across an, another target face. Um, okay, so my last example, and we have just uh, uh, one more, a few more minutes left, so forgive me. Um, I wanted to show you the point pattern. This was one I wrote personally. Um, it allows you to pattern parts at sketch location. So if you've ever had one of those scenarios that, you know, I want to pattern a certain part, um, but it's not evenly spaced instances. It's not a circular um, pattern. It's not a linear pattern in evenly spaced instances. It's kind of these random points throughout my part, and I want to pattern this other part around them. This is a great example where the point pattern is useful. It allows you to pattern a part at sketch points. And so for those, you know, um, patterns where they're not uniform, where there's not evenly spaced instances, you can sketch points and then pattern parts at those points. So let me show you how this works. Select point pattern. You select your entity to pattern, in this case, this part. A reference point, I'll choose the point at the bottom of the part, and then locations that you want to pattern this part at. And this is just a matter of selecting sketch points. Okay. It will then pattern that part at those points. Okay, so very simple command. All it's doing is taking your part and patterning it. 
Some things that I like to point out with this is it's not just patterning parts. You can add and merge these with the original. Right? So now this is one part with all the standoffs as features. I can remove, so I can say I want to cut every one of these parts away from another part. That's another example. And of course, intersect, which is I only want what is intersecting between the two parts. That's what I'm left with. So you have all the Boolean operations built into the port, uh, point pattern as well. Okay. So definitely worth checking out if you're trying to create, you know, kind of those non-uniform patterns where you are patterning a feature or part, but you, it's not evenly spaced and you want to use points as references. Okay. Um, question, just as effective using an iPad or PC or Chromebook. It's important to point out uh, all of these features, the custom features I'm showing you, the last three, as well as all of the patterns that I've shown you up to this point are fully supported on an iPad. It means you can create a point pattern or a fill pattern or um, a transform or a circular pattern from your iPad. So even custom features created by users can be used on a mobile device or a PC or a Chromebook, and they all behave and look the same exact way. Uh, what is the reference point? What would happen if you changed it? It would shift all of this down. Uh, so the reference point is a reference between the two points, and you can select anything. So I could select this point, and it would shift all of them over. I could leave it blank, and it would use the part's center. So now you'll notice as this patterns, it's using the part's center and attaching it to your sketch point. Um, so the point is just a reference for the pattern. You know, where do you want it to pattern relative to? And in this case, I have this, this base point. Um, you can leave that empty and it will use the part's middle, the center of the part. But I think in most situations, you want to select a, an edge, you know, a point from an edge or a sketch point or something like that. Um, do they have to be on the same plane or is the pattern always normal to the sketch plane? It does not rotate or translate. In any, it does translate. I shouldn't say it does not rotate. So if I patterned a point on a, um, going in another normal direction, let's say that this is the front plane and the point was coming from the top plane, it would do. It would be in the same orientation it is here. And so it's not with respect to the normal direction of the point that you've specified. Now, that being said, you can have it on as many planes or points as you want. Okay. All right, so that is the point pattern. And as I mentioned before, any one of these commands can be added to your toolbar today. Uh, if you click Add Custom Feature, Feature Script Samples, you'll find the curve pattern, the fill pattern, the point pattern, all of them can be added to your toolbar. So definitely check them out. I did. I wanted to show you all of the patterns, even the ones um, that are not necessarily a part of the standard toolbar. All right, so I have two minutes left. I'm going to stick around and answer any questions. I have one last slide so, uh, for you, so bear with me. Um, going forward, if you have any um, professional work that you'd like to do in Onshape, we really encourage you to do so. And, and definitely use Onshape in a professional job and let us know what you think. If you have a project in mind, um, use it for Onshape and, and give us your feedback. There's a feedback tool under the help menu. Um, we really encourage you to give us your feedback as, as to what you'd like to see, what you think may be a bug, what priorities we should have in the future. All of that is accepted. So we really encourage you, give us your feedback. There's a, a feedback tool under the help menu. Um, we really encourage you to, to let us know what you think. Also invite others and share. There's a share dialogue in the top right corner of all your documents. By default, anything you create is only visible by you. But if you share, you can work together and, and collaborate in real time with others. You can communicate in a document with comments, all kinds of cool stuff can be done from sharing. Also, the last thing I want to mention is if you're interested in meeting local users or maybe interested in establishing a user group, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to help you out. Okay, so I'm going to stick around and answer any questions. I know there are a few there, but um, I want to say thank you, everyone, and have a good day.